All right, it's the only game in town. So when the Congressional Budget Office scores a House plan and says of this latest effort that it might shrink the deficit over 10 years by close to 400 billion bucks, it is also going to, it says, uh, mean 24 million fewer Americans will have health insurance. So the same 24 million don't have it right now. It's basing that on the, the assumption that as things stand now, if you didn't do anything else, 24 million would have health insurance in 10 years. That's an important point to point out because that's based on an assumption that is now uh, corrected by a new assumption on the growth prospects for a plan that hasn't even met conclusion yet. The Senate GOP Conference Chairman, Senator John Thune. Now, Senator, regardless of what you and your colleagues do in the Senate, um, many are saying the danger with relying on assumptions of any sort is they, they're, they're really not very valuable or, or good on, on the paper they're written on. But it's the only game in town, and it's already being portrayed uh, in the media and by some of your Democratic colleagues, even a couple of your Republican ones, as a bit too mean and a bit too unfair. What do you think? <laughs> Well, first off, Neil, two things. One is the Congressional Budget Office has missed the mark significantly in the past. I think we have to remember that uh, these are estimates. They are based on assumptions. And, you know, they, they assumed that 24 million people were going to sign up for Obamacare on the Obamacare exchanges, and instead they got somewhere in the 10 to 11 million range. So they've, they've been off before. Secondly, when you remove the individual mandate, there are a lot of people out there who are probably going to choose not to purchase health care coverage. And that's, that's just one of the features of the House bill. They removed the individual mandate. And so I think you can expect that there are probably going to be fewer people, but it's going to be their choice. And um, so we're, we're reacting, obviously, like everybody is to what the CBO came out with with respect to what the House did. But the Senate now is starting to, to mark up and to write our version of this bill. And um, we'll be working with the Congressional Budget, Congressional Budget Office, but also with others who are giving us input about what some of these policy changes might look like. What we want to do is rescue people from a failed system. We know a Obamacare is not working. It is unsustainable. And we want to put in place uh, reforms that will drive down the cost of coverage for people in this country. Um, is it fair to say then, whatever the House effort is, or whether they have to redo something, revote on it, or we're not quite sure the direction it'll take, that that's dead on arrival with you guys? So you are starting from scratch. As assuming that is the case, then, Senator, how soon do you want to get this done? Well, we, we want to move as quickly as we can. We realize that, uh, you know, there's an expectation out there, of course, among the insurer, insurers that they're going to know what the rules are going forward as they begin to put out their estimates for what premiums are going to be this next year. And so we've got to give them some certainty. So we have to move, I think, fairly quickly. We've had a lot of discussions. All 52 Republican senators have been involved in that. We're taking everybody's ideas, and now comes the time to write the bill. But I expect that will happen here in the next few weeks, and I hope that we're voting uh, soon on this as well, because I think we owe it to the American people to give them a better health care insurance system than what we have today. And clearly what we have today is not working. They've got skyrocketing premiums, deductibles, co-pays. The latest uh, HHS study that just came out uh, this week indicated that the average premium since 2013 has more than doubled uh, up to now. And there are three states where it's actually tripled over that same time period. This is not working. It's got to be changed. It's got to be fixed. Uh, we're in the process of doing that, but we want to make sure that we, we do it the right way. Do you worry, though, that this bumps into whatever progress you hope to make on, on, on tax reform? Because I know that's near and dear to you. It really is, Neil. As you know, we can't have, continue to have 1.5% growth in the economy. That's what we've seen for the last eight years. We've got to get back to a more normal 3% growth rate or north of there. And what that means is better paying jobs, higher wages for people in this country. And so we need to reform the tax code. That will follow on. It, it is important, in my view, that we deal with health care reform first, simply because it frees up a lot of uh, baseline resource to uh, to come up with a better tax, re tax reform bill uh, down the road. So um, both those, those issues right now, we're, we're, we're multitasking here in the Senate. There's a lot of discussions going on about tax reform as well, both here and in the House. And my hope would be that uh, we'll be able to legislate on both of these issues before the end of the year. I think it's important that we do that, and I think it's important for growth in the economy, which is ultimately what we want to achieve. All right, Senator, thank you very, very much. Good seeing you again. Always going to be with you. Thanks, Neil.